Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making over this cute little vintage dresser. Um, I love to get little pieces like this in because it gives me a good opportunity to use some of these colors that I'm not used to using uh, because I like to use neutrals on my larger pieces. Um, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to try this uh, Dixie Belle du vintage duck egg. And while I haven't ever really seen a duck egg that's blue, I think this is a really pretty color of blue. And since the cottage core uh, style of decorating is really making a comeback, uh, this is a, a really good color for cottage core. And I don't know if you guys notice how well this is going on, but Oh my goodness, it's it's covering so well in just one coat. And I thought that it might dry and I would have to go back over some places, but, but not at all. One coat completely covered this piece. I'm excited that this piece has so much detail because when I go to distress and, uh, and white wax uh, this piece when I'm finished, it, it's just going to make those details really pop. Now I didn't mention that I did clear coat this before I started painting it. Um, I clear coated it and let it dry because a lot of these old stains are really bad to to bleed and they'll just bleed through your color and it doesn't matter how many coats you go over that it'll just keep bleeding through uh, if you don't clear coat it. So I have had to go over a piece that I've already painted with a couple of coats of clear coat and uh, and then repaint the whole thing because once you have that bleed through that that's really all you can do to fix it. And I'm using a furniture brush here because it Anytime you have a lot of detail like this, the furniture brush is really good to get down into those details. I had to really fight with myself to uh, to keep myself from painting this piece pink because it, of it being small and so decorative. I was thinking a little girl's room, but I'm so glad that I went with this color because I think it's really uh, going to suit this piece well. And thanks so much to everybody who's been watching my channel. I really appreciate your support and all your sweet comments. And if y'all can think of anything you would like me to do differently or uh, or something that you would like me to, uh, to do that I haven't done already, please feel free to ask. I, I would love uh, to have your input and uh, even even criticism if you know if there's something that, that you feel like I, I'm doing wrong, please let me know. All I ask is that you be kind. If you haven't tried one of these furniture brushes, you're really missing out. You should get one and try it because uh, it gets into all those little grooves that are otherwise hard with just a flat brush. Um, especially spindles and, and legs um, when you're doing chairs and and um, and items like that. Now here, I'm just doing the sides of these drawers with a wash, and I'm just taking this same color that I'm putting on the, on this piece, this vintage duck egg, and watered it down. I just mixed about half water and half paint, and then I'm wiping it down, and, and then here I'm doing another coat. Some of these other drawers were a little bit easier to cover, but for some reason I had to do a couple coats on this one. Um, I'm doing the wash because I don't like doing a straight up paint on the sides because I'm afraid that it will cause my drawers to try to stick. Uh, but if you just do a wash, it, it cleans up those sides for one thing. Uh, but in this case, I want it lighter because I want to end with uh, putting some scripture on the side of one of the drawers. And uh, I didn't feel like it would show up very well on this uh, on this darker wood. Uh, but see, that one just covered fine just with the one coat. And so I do all the drawers like that. And, um, and they dry really fast because, you know, you're just kind of wiping off what you put on. You're just 
uh, creating a, more of a water-based stain is what you're doing. And then that kind of neatens up those sides too. Now, like I said, I've been using chalk paint on this piece. So when you use a chalk paint, uh, until you seal it with something, in this case, I'm gonna be using a wax, but until you seal it with something, it's um, water soluble which means um, I'm not gonna have to get out the sandpaper to distress this piece. I'm just using a damp cloth here and just wiping on those raised edges. And there's a lot of areas like that to distress on this piece because like I said before, it has a lot of detail. Uh, but I'm just taking this uh, damp cloth and, uh, and just wiping across those edges. And you know, sometimes you have to use some firm pressure uh, but if you don't wait too long for this to dry, if you just kind of let it get dry to the touch, then it's, it's very easily distressed with just, uh, with just this stamp. And you have a lot more control this way also. So I'm just going to go over this entire piece, all the raised edges. I don't bother to try to distress the very top, just around the edges of the top and all the little raised edges and uh, this technique works really well. Obviously you can skip this step if you don't like this distressed look but but I really do so um, I almost never paint a piece without distressing it. Now if this piece hadn't been such a dark wood then I would have had to base coat it with a darker color and um, I mean, you can choose whatever color you want, uh, but you know, when you rub that off, that's the color that's going to show through. So generally I use either a dark brown or, or a black, um, but definitely something dark. So here I am distressing that extra detail on these drawers. And when I get this uh, distressing done then it will be ready for the next step which will be a white wax. Now I know you guys are going to get tired of me using white wax because honestly I'm just obsessed with it. Anytime that there's a, a lot of detail like this and there's areas for this white wax to settle down into it just really makes that detail pop and I love the way it makes the color look. So this color is not uh, not a real bright blue anyway, but once you put this white wax on it, it, it just has such a muted look that I just really like. And then once, you're, once this wax dries well, it just, it, it makes your furniture have such a, such a good feel to it. You can just feel the protection, but it, like I said, it just has such a good smooth feel. And I don't have any particular brand of, of wax that I like. Uh, I, I really haven't tried any that I didn't like. Uh, maybe some of these um, more liquidy waxes, you have to kind of wipe them off quicker. This is one of them. Uh, that you have to wipe off a little bit quicker because if you wet your chalk paint too much, it'll try to rub off. But I really didn't have a problem with this one at all. Um, if you work in small sections, then that's not a problem. But the more pasty waxes uh, won't do that anyway. And you can take a clear wax uh, with these liquidy waxes especially and just put some uh, some paint in them and you can make them whatever color of wax you want. I mean, whatever color you want to settle down into those details, uh, then that's the color you would put in your clear wax and you could just make it any color that you want. Uh, but I really like this uh, white wax, which is not really white. It's more of a cream color, uh, but it, it just has such a pretty look. And even on these flat surfaces where you would think that there was nowhere for this wax to settle, it settles down into uh, the porosity of the, um, of the paint. And it's just, uh, it really changes the look of it. 
And you can really tell on that top drawer there because it's just loaded with detail and you can see all that wax settling in. Um, and uh, you really need to try this technique if you haven't tried it yet. You can take a piece of furniture also that doesn't have any detail and you can make you some clay molds for it and um, to give this uh, wax somewhere to settle and that does just as well. But it's always nice when the detail is already there and you can omit that step because uh, that clay has to dry overnight before you can paint on it. So if I didn't say, you just put this wax on and then you just take a, a cloth, a smooth cloth. I wouldn't get one, you wouldn't use one that had, uh, that shed fibers badly, but uh, just take a smooth cloth. I like to use t-shirt a lot of times and uh, just brush that on and wipe it off. And when you wipe these flat areas off, make sure that you keep your, uh, you wipe in the same direction because that will show up if you, if you wipe that in different directions. You can put the uh, wax on in any direction that you want and sometimes it's good to go in different directions with it but when you wipe that off and you're on that big flat surface like that just keep your uh, keep your strokes in the same direction see this piece from start to finish is not taking very long at all I know that I'm fast forwarding through a lot of it but I mean it really didn't take very long at all to finish this piece and it's already taking on that really cottagey feel i really lucked up on this piece because it already had uh, the drawers were lined and that was in really good condition and i had already planned on putting blue on this piece before i really noticed the liner on the inside of the drawers and it just happened to match it perfectly and the uh, floral print was uh, already a really cottagey look. Um, but there it is finished. And there's that, there's that liner that I was talking about. And it was in really good condition. And now I'm just going to put my little scripture stamp on the side here. Uh, I'm just putting John 3.16 on this one. And, um, and then this piece will be done. Uh, because I've already put those uh, drawer pulls on uh, when I show the reveal. But uh, there it is. And with those drawer pulls, I just put some white wax on and wiped it off. And, and look how it transformed those. Uh, and there's a reminder of the before. And here's what it looks like now. What a transformation in such a short amount of time. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and I hope you have a good evening.